Welcome to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Listen and grow as Dell questions the status quo, encourages you to think differently, and empowers you to make a better life. Get ready as Dell challenges core beliefs, seeks the truth, and reveals the roadmap to the lifestyle you really want. And now your host, multi-millionaire, national award-winning investor, CEO and founder of Lifestyles Unlimited, Del Wamsley. Welcome to the Del Wamsley Radio Show, where the hype ends and the help begins. I'm your host, Del Wamsley, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Today, my friends, is another installment of the uh, real estate retired group of programs I'm putting together right now. What I want you to be able to see is that people really do retire from investing in real estate. But today is a special show because it's not one about the very, very successful, very, very rich people. Today's show is for that guy or gal out there that just don't have the motivation to go out and be really, really rich. Or another way to look at it is it's the person that is satiated, is satisfied with a smaller amount of money. Long time ago, I had a guy come in and join up with me. And I said, what is it going to take for you to retire? He says, a thousand bucks a month. That's it. And so I went out and bought him three houses and that thousand dollars a month retired him. And he was the happiest guy I ever met. He, he had a little piece of land that he owned. It had a, a place to fish, a lake on it. He, he had a boat and he fished. And every once in a while, he'd, he'd work shutdowns in a refinery and make some extra money to be able to buy a car or whatever he needed to do. But the bottom line was he was very happy there. I got an email today and I'm gonna, I've got a guy that's, Similar to that, although he's really not satiated completely, he's at that point where he was able to retire at a young age because he just realized that he didn't have to have a lot of money to do that. And so he went out and took the real estate, uh, did the real estate transactions necessary to get where he needed to be to retire. But before we get to this gentleman, I'll bring him on later, uh, is I had a guy email me, and is this is the perfect corollary. Here's a guy that had money lost all of his money, and decided that being poor is just fine. And when you ever have failure in life or you don't ever succeed, if you end up at the bottom of the barrel in our financial society, um, that's okay if that's what you're okay with. But the point that I'm trying to make to this gentleman throughout this email exchange, and I'm going to do something you don't do in radio. I'm going to read the email exchange. I'm not going to use the guy's name because it gets pretty nasty towards the end. Um, but the bottom line is, is that what I'm trying to point I'm trying to make to this guy is that you don't even if you don't want a lot of stuff, if stuff isn't that important to you, wouldn't it be better if you had that stuff without working? So I'm going to go ahead and read this and get to this. I've got to get a lot in here before we get to the uh, the interview, and I don't want to mess this up. So here we go. Hi, Dell. My name is Blank. I listen to your show from time to time while I'm driving between my working man jobs. I heard your opinion about the working man song, and I thought I detected some disdain. Interestingly, I used to be a bit like you. I had a lot of money that my money was in real estate, but I wasn't happy. I was experiencing emotional. Uh, I was experiencing an emotional and I dare say spiritual void. When I became charitable, I stopped playing the big money game. I took hand me, uh, handyman jobs and started playing little money game for the first time. I felt as though I were earning my money. I asked for some guidance from the man upstairs as well. This might sound a bit unbelievable to you, and that's fine, but I actually am happier now. I'm happily married, have friends, and trust. I have a decent little place called home, and I call a decent little car, and uh, I have a little bit of money. I have a stand-up reputation, and I have a relationship with the one upstairs. So let's talk about this real quick. The first, first thing. Whenever someone tells you they're just like you, I was just like you. No, he wasn't just like me. He was something completely different than me, right? And when you hear his story, you'll find out he is completely different than me. And uh, you can see why he's so jaded if you really look into it. So the second thing is I I write back to him. I said, why do you think you can't have all that and enough passive income to to not have to do the small jobs? That's where I was when I retired at 34 years of age. I only made $60,000 a year. But by living within my means and reinvesting my savings, I now have all that plus a lot of money. So I'm making the point to him, okay, I'm giving in to your point. You, you know, I was there. I know what being poor is. It's no big deal. It's no disgrace, right? But he wasn't happy with this. Now, you've got to understand, 
He's writing me. I'm not writing him. He is writing me. So he goes on and says, I understand your point. I was a child actor and a young man actor. I made $9 million and I was on some famous TV commercials and famous TV shows. But the people on the higher levels had an appetite for expensive everything. But the people on the higher levels had an appetite for expensive things. That must be him, right? I can't explain what he's mean here. There's no end to their desire and it made monsters out of all of them. I felt a calling to do something different. Uh, to give to people. Now, understand this. If the guy really made $9 million, which I'm not saying he didn't, he could have retired the rest of his life and done nothing and had an incredible life. It made 10% on that. Uh, 10% return on $9 million is $900,000 a year. His life would have been perfect, and he would never have had to work another day in his life. He didn't have to become a bad person. He didn't have to love expensive things. Where did the $9 million go? My idea, my thought process is he probably got it stolen from him or he just spent it all up and he realized what an idiot he was. Contact him back and, and say this. He says, Dell, I really want to ask you is what's wrong with the guy having the appreciation for simple things? Money is one thing, but the existence of life is a greater mystery. Don't you think there's something greater than you and smarter than you? And da, 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 da. And, and the bottom line is, what is this guy working for? This guy is calling the messenger to try to tell the messenger that he's wrong. Yet he wants to listen to the messenger, but he doesn't want to let the messenger be right. The bottom line, he's self-conflicted, and he doesn't realize that he could have, or probably does realize, it's probably why he's miserable, that he had $9 million, he could have lived his entire life like a king. What I want you to be able to see is that people really do retire from investing in real estate. But today on the new series, Real Estate Retired, as uh, Michael from Katy, we're not giving out Michael's last name simply because his wife has a high-end job, and uh, we don't want to um, have her boss or anybody where she works think that being retired is something she's going to want to do and not keep her job. So, Michael, welcome to the show. Hey, welcome, Dell. Thank you. Uh, before you came on, I heard you had some uh, technical glitches. You couldn't listen to the, the piece before you. But the piece before you was about a guy who made $9 million as a child actor and ended up somehow losing all that money, and now he's poor. And he says he's – or he actually states he just walked away from the, the rat race of, you know, all that goes on in Hollywood or whatever and uh, wants to be poor, and he's a window washer now. And he's – wants to believe that being a window washer making next to no money uh, is is a good life. And he's got all kinds of rationalization for that, which I said, that's fine. But instead of being a window washer, if you're going to be willing to live at a um, minimal cost of living like I did when I first retired, uh, being conservative in your cost of living, like you do, I know that you do, uh, why don't you just create some passive income and replace that? And I made an example of a guy who would come to me and he only needed a thousand bucks a month to live and he loved to fish and <laughs> that's all he wanted to do. And so I, you know, we got him three rent houses and boom, he retired in like six months to a year. So your story is very similar to that in that when I've been talking to you about this. And so let's just talk about your mindset. Uh, when you decided in the very beginning that you were going to get into real estate, when you first started, what was your mindset and were you really thinking you were going to retire early like you did? No, I never thought I was going to retire early, um, but what motivated me to get into real estate was my job. I was uh, 100% travel. I had a corporate job for uh, the telecom industry, and for seven years, I was only home in Houston on weekends and holidays. Um, that's a very strong motivator. And the second part of that motivation came when, during my tenure, we grew the company from $180 million in revenue to about $1.1 billion, and then we went public. And the rewards of this IPO were not spread around the way they were promised, and that was kind of the, kind of the final straw there that I had to go build something for my own, um, that I couldn't wait around for someone else to make it happen for me. Um, so that's why I'm so thankful that while I was in the background of my W-2 job, I was building generational wealth using what Lifestyle teaches. Wow, that's Michael, that's interesting because that's even closer to this guy than I thought, the two stories paralleling. Because obviously, you know, he had the big, the big job, the big money, the big earned income. 
And, you know, he walked away from it somehow without that money. I don't know whether somebody stole it from him or he just spent it all away. I couldn't really pick that up from his story. Uh, but the bottom line is you come out of that situation. I, you know, you come from corporate America, you see people who really are, don't have your interests in mind, right? Just what you said. They don't have your interests in mind. They're there for themselves. And that kind of leaves a taste in your mouth after that. So you decide you're going to go out and do your own thing. Uh, let's talk about how you found us. And as you went through the process, what were you thinking? What did you learn? Yeah, so my um, I did a, I did my first real estate deal, and I did not do it the way Lifestyles teaches. And along the way, I met a, a private lender, and he was he kept telling me, you know, if you do this thing right, you turn one house into three, three houses into nine, and it's a fun game. But eventually, you're going to have to do multifamily. And he said the only place to do multifamily is at Lifestyles Unlimited. And so after he kept bringing it up. And we're just trying to talk about getting a loan to buy a house. Uh, eventually, he took me up to the Houston office, and we sat down with Curtis Haynes and talked about what it looks like being a member at Lifestyles Unlimited. And after I met everybody at the office and got some questions answered, I signed up immediately. So were you aware when you were speaking to Curtis that he has over a billion dollars of real estate? <laughs> That's the thing. No, no, I did not. I found that out later. I mean... He wasn't dressed like he's got a billion in assets under management. He was. He didn't. He didn't act or, or talk like it. He was very humble, very uh, direct, very nice guy. And I found that out later after I joined. It's amazing, isn't it? It just it blows so many people's mind when they find that out. But that's the way it is. It, it, and I think that's what this guy was talking about. He's thinking all the people out there that have money are bad. They're bad people. They're not, are they? I mean, you've been to lifestyles for a while now. I mean. What kind of people do you meet in Lifestyles? Um, just like my friends, just like my family, just like my coworkers. They're just normal people. Nobody's nobody's driving. No one's wearing a three-piece suit. No one's driving a uh, high-end luxury vehicle. It's just a family getting together. We have pot roasts and potlucks. We go scuba diving. We organize um, social events, and it's it's just like a second family. Yeah. So you assume you took the two day, right? Yes, I did. I took the two day first with David Fisher. Let's talk about that. Um, when you take that, most people have some real epiphanies. Can you share with us any of the epiphanies you had? Well, first thought I had was, I don't know what I've been doing with my whole life. Like everything is just right there. It's so simple. And it's like, you start thinking of every dollar you ever spent on something stupid and why you weren't doing this with it. The, the, the mindset I had before I went to the two, before I went to the two day was you'd be doing well. If you own your own home, you'd be doing great if you could buy one rental a year. But after you go to the two day and you see how David Fisher and lifestyle teaches, you realize that uh, one house a year is, is, is not going to cut it. Like it's just, so simple to get out there and as, as long as you're willing to do the work you can have whatever you're willing to go work for what about the process what you just explained is the aha moment about life that you know you really got all that within the first half of the first day about the way life is really presented to you you know when you you grow up it's like you go to work get a job you know struggle for the rest of your life retire have a pile of money, try to live off the money, try to die before you run out of money. Okay, so that's that's the problem. That's the rat race, as Robert Kiyosaki calls it. What about the actual investing caught your eye? Um, it, what, what really stood out to me is how little money I actually needed and how easy it was to make these investments. And after I did my – I went back and looked at the the total profits from my first single-family deal – and then I pulled up my 401k and compared it to what I had been doing. I got you. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back with Michael and the Del Wamsley Radio Show. Teaching you with a ro- 
roadmap to creating the lifestyle you really want. Keep listening. The Del Wamsley Radio Show returns in moments. Need more unconventional wisdom that'll set you free? Subscribe to Lifestyles Unlimited on YouTube and binge content that will actually help you get where you want to go in life from people who are already there. With over 50,000 members and 32 years of proven success, there's so much more we want to share with you than what we have time for on the radio. On YouTube, we go beyond our shows and feature our best content from podcasts, interviews, expo, master's tour, fireside chats, special events, and more. You're hearing the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. Want more life-changing knowledge? Access our podcast and listen on demand at lifestylesunlimited.com under the radio tab. Now your host, Dell Wamsley. Welcome back to Dell Wamsley Radio Show. With me here today in the Real Estate Retired Series is Michael from Katy. And as we went to break, Michael, you got cut off on the process that you went through to purchasing uh, the single family homes that retired. You want to pick that back up and uh, see where it takes us? Yeah, of course, Del. So when I joined Lifestyles and I went through the training in the two day with David Fisher, I learned that I need far less money to do a single family deal than I'd previously thought. And we also learned that it's no secret that interest rates are up. But what that has done is created massive amounts of equity capture. And so while Several of my houses had very high cash flow. Now the, the deals that me and other members are doing going forward just have huge amounts of equity capture where you can sometimes triple or even quadruple your money. And that is something that nobody was talking about until I went to the two day. Yeah, that is something that is really makes a difference. can make a quick change in your life. And I know that in your portfolio, you had made some really good purchases and had quite a bit of equity. Uh, Let's talk about that equity. I've got penciled out here $335,000 just off the top of my speaking to you kind of numbers. Uh, I mean, that's over hundred grand a house that you did here. What? How did you get all that? Uh, man, I bought it right, and I bought it the way that Lifestyles teaches. We buy distressed single family that needs a lot of work, and we pay what it's worth at that time. We fix it up. We do best product, best price. And we rent it out to the best qualified tenants. We don't have a lot of uh, maintenance calls. We don't have a lot of problems with our with our residents because we screen them properly. And then we let what happens in real estate go through the natural cycle. Uh, things appreciate, loans pay down, rents go up, and it's it outpaced anything I ever earned at my W two job. Just having a handful of single family properties. You know, it's interesting, Michael, because I'm, I'm listening and I'm thinking back to myself when I first started, and it, it is really strange to me how something so simple as buying a rent house, how easy it is to do if you do it right, and a lot of people do it wrong, and then a lot of people do it wrong, and they still end up doing pretty well because it's so forgiving in many cases, but if you do it right, Man, it just you can knock it out of the park, which it looks like you've done. Um, as you as you work through this here, let's think if you can for a second or share if you can. You came out of a job, corporate America job. I came out of a corporate America job. Uh, this other guy came out of being a movie star. So, I mean, it really doesn't parallel with us. But <laughs> what about the average person out there? Just, you know, just the average Joe. Can they do this? Uh, they can. Um because, I mean, I was the average Joe, and I didn't think I could until I did it. And once you do it, it's, it's like something you can't unsee. Um, and then I'm surrounded by people who have the means to do exactly what I've done. Um, but they just don't have the mindset. They don't have the right guidance. They don't have the, the right mentors. Um, but I just see people who could probably go further and faster than I did but it's just difficult to even start the conversation. So I brought a couple of friends of mine that would listen up to lifestyle since then. And we have had two members join at my recommendation, but it just kills me how many people have the same opportunities as me and just can't wrap their head around it. Yeah. I see that all the time. It, and really that's, um, that gives me an opportunity to make a, 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 a an advertisement. Just now that we're thinking about that, Michael, I'm uh, <laughs> I believe that there's so many people who are in that very same boat right now. 
that we've got to get them off the sidelines because what you said about the market being the prime time to buy right now is so true. So, folks, if you're out there, if you're listening to this and you want to get started right now, I want you to go online and go to DellHelpMeNow.com. DellHelpMeNow.com. Get in here. Just go hit the page and uh, see when you can get, get in to see us and uh, get going. You, you need to get started now. Uh, I'm going to put a lot of process in, Michael, over the next couple of uh, weeks to get people started up into the right process because it's, it's, it's working so well. So we'll go back to you now. You did the right steps. You got the three houses, you knocked it out of the park. You made, you know, over $300,000 in equity. You got enough cash flow. Now, you, you're living pretty frugally, I assume, that if you were able to live off the rent of these three houses, but you got quite a bit of rent coming out of them, don't you? Yeah, I do. Um, it's kind of funny that each year you uh, you get a raise, and that raise is called uh, a rent increase, adjusting to market rent. And it was kind of funny that you sit down for a review at your W two job, and you drive yourself into the ground, and you get three or four percent. Then you go home and raise the rent on your three tenants, and you're like, "Wow, uh, this was a lot easier." Um, and so. I, I do have a ton of equity in these homes, but we're getting to a point where now that I'm focusing on what Lifestyles teaches, we're starting the process of selling these houses and redeploying our capital. And 2024 is, we think, is going to be a really, really great year because these, these equity captures are just so much higher than they were when I started a few years ago. But to get back to your question, yeah, we do live frugally, or you could say we live frugally because our cost of living is low. However, we just spent two months in Asia. Um, We did Japan, Taiwan, and Vietnam, and we did things that most people who have a good salary and a beautiful home and a couple of nice cars in the driveway, we we did the things that they couldn't dream of doing. You tell people what you're doing, and they assume that that you're some kind of mega millionaire, but yeah, we do live frugally, but do we really? No, we just focus on what's important to us. And now that time has come where it's time for me to step away from the jo- from my job. And my wife enjoys working. She's going to continue to work. But we're going to take this thing to the next level while I'm living the lifestyle and we're doing what we love to do. If you would like to retire like Michael at 35 years of age, or if you're older than 35 and still would like to retire, I want you to go right now to dellhelpmenow.com that's all one word just put it on there d-e-l by the way you need to know that it's d-e-l helpmenow.com and uh let's get you in here with me let's get you next to michael and all the rest of lifestyles members this is your year this is your chance you've put it off you've worked 10 years 20 years 30 years 40 years of your life it's enough it's time to retire go to dellhelpmenow.com and that's d-e-l that's how you spell dell and let's get you started here. You've mentioned many times or a couple times here that uh, your your mentor said all things lead to multifamily. What's your thoughts on that and how do you see that in your future? Yeah, Dell, I think I just need to turn this capital over one more time in single family. And then it'll be time to look at multifamily because as Lifestyles teaches, eventually you hit this scale, this economy of scale where it just makes sense to, to put everything under one roof. How do you see yourself working through that? Well, as an IRO, as you said, you've got more flexibility and it's all your own capital on the line. But when you become a lead, you can do a lot more, a lot quicker with a lot less. And, you know, I've I've learned there's a couple different groups of people at Lifestyles and you, you don't really know who you are until you go through the training and kind of see the different paths and meet people that are doing them. But there's a, there's a lot of people at Lifestyles that just want to collect a check. They're, they don't want to get up and go out and do the work. And there's also people that really love their job and don't want to quit their job. They just want to grow their retirement. And so there's definitely um, demand for leads to go out there and do the work that needs to be done. So that's been really interesting to me as I meet more of our leads and see what it looks like to help out other members of the community. Yeah, and um... – those people are what we call in this group the passive investors, and they're getting into what we call uh, lead investors deals. And in the real world out there, they call that syndications. So um, have you in the past ever done 
gotten into somebody else's passive deal? Yeah, I actually have. We did a. Uh, I was investing in a 120 unit in Colleen, Texas. And uh, how'd that work out for you? I mean, it worked out great. I mean, you get a you get a check every quarter, and it was awesome. You get a report in in the email or maybe a webinar, and uh, whether you check the report or not, the uh, check shows up. Um, it was really great, but um, I wanted to be more hands-on and focus on those big equity captures we have right now. So single family was just more attractive to me at that time. Got gotcha. you. All right. So what's the future look like? I know this year you're going to you're going to chop chop on those single family deals. Um, you're going to go IRO, multifamily, or are you going to go lead? Put your foot uh, well, down, make a decision. Well, um, the more leads that I meet and the more that I learn about how it works, I think there's uh, being a lead's probably the way that I'm going to go once I churn all this capital and get out of these single family deals. Um, it's just a, such a great opportunity to help everyone out in the community and grow really fast, um, uh, grow right. everybody's now, net worth really fast. Since you said that, now I'm going to put a little pressure on you. I think you should change your approach real quick here. Take the money you got coming out of these three properties and go ahead and be a lead right now because there's going to be great opportunities this year. And I think you could skip a step if you're going to be a lead. You see, if you had to go IRO to get your money, you'd have to go through the next step to end up being have a million. But you can go out there and raise $10 million overnight as a lead. I think your personality, I think that you've been in corporate America and did a, a build out of a big company. I think you're ready. I think you can do it. I think you need to do it now. So thank you for coming on today and sharing your story with us. I really appreciate that. The rest of you out there, remember this. As Michael has proven, it's not the money. It's the lifestyle. Let's go get one. Hit DellHelpMeNow.com. Change your life forever. Let's get them off. The information and opinions you hear on the Del Wamsley Radio Show are those of the host, Del Wamsley, his guests, and his callers. The Del Wamsley Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Del Wamsley Show constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.